Hi friends, full out season is here. And if you are an all-star cheerleader, it is completely natural for you to feel anxious, nervous, scared, completely overwhelmed when approaching the first couple of full outs of the season. So in today's video, I'm gonna be giving you five of my personal tips and tricks to help you stop overthinking full outs. Now, I have been an overthinker all my life as an all-star cheerleader and current all-star cheerleading coach, and overthinking has nearly stopped me from doing things that ended up being really good for me. So overthinking almost stopped me from moving to Texas to cheer. Overthinking almost stopped me from applying for my dream job. And overthinking almost stopped me from making this channel and even making this video for you guys today. But recently, I was inspired to read a book called How to Stop Overthinking, and it led to me listening to podcasts and watching more videos about overthinking, and I have learned some tips and tricks to help combat that natural desire that I know that I have and many all-star cheerleaders have when it comes to overthinking anything in life, especially full outs. Now, this is nothing that I have personally mastered. It's something that I'm still working on, but I thought since I had these tips and tricks and since they've been very helpful to me, that I would share them with you guys. First, let's get into what overthinking is and where it comes from, and then we'll dive into my five tips and tricks to help stop that overthinking. So first, what is overthinking? Um, when you Google or research overthinking, you will find it in the category called analysis paralysis. And analysis paralysis is the type of thinking where we stop ourselves from doing something because we're thinking too much about it or we're in our heads so much about it. It's that sort of thinking where we feel like the more that we think about something, the more information that we're gonna have. And so the easier it'll be to make a decision or the better the result will be. Um, and the opposite type of thinking would be extinct versus instinct, which is kind of funny. It's basically the opposite problem where you stop yourself from doing something or reaching a goal because you're not thinking about it at all. And so that's not really the category that I fall under or that I know most cheerleaders fall under. Most cheerleaders fall under that analysis paralysis type of thinking where we're in our heads so much about something or we're overthinking something and so it keeps us from doing that. So for example, let's say that there's a skill in your full out that you're really nervous about. Let's just say it's a standing back tuck, for example. So before practice, you're thinking about your standing back. When you get to practice, you're thinking about it. During the walkthrough, you're thinking these negative thoughts or you have these negative emotions and then the moment arises, you're in a full out, it's time to do your standing back and you bust it or you touch out or you don't throw it, you completely freeze up. And that, in my opinion, would be an example of analysis paralysis where you're literally thinking about something so much and these thoughts are not positive and they're holding you back, so therefore it actually keeps you from doing that thing. An example of an extinct versus instinct would be like you're in the middle of a full out thinking about what show you're gonna watch on Netflix and so you bust your standing back because you're not thinking about having a big jump, having a nice set, having a tight core, like all those things that you need to think about when executing. So generally there are two types of overthinking. The first one would be past event overthinking and this is where someone has said something or done something to you or something has happened to you. So you create this like narrative in your mind or an elaborate story. Like for example, if you text someone and they don't reply to your text, all of a sudden you start overthinking, oh, they didn't reply to me because they don't like me or what did I say or do for them not to reply to me or are they talking to someone else instead of me? Like all of these crazy negative thoughts and elaborate story when in reality that person probably was asleep or didn't see your message. And so you create this type of like suffering or like you're miserable because of all of these negative thoughts when it's just completely unrealistic. And this is not the type of overthinking that I wanna focus on today. The type of overthinking I feel most cheerleaders deal with when approaching full out is that future kind of overthinking. And it's very similar to that analysis paralysis that we were talking about where it's really that type of overthinking that keeps us from reaching our goals or living with regret because we didn't do something because we were in our heads too much about them. 
Broadly, the reason this type of overthinking happens is anxiety or fear, which are two common words or feelings that we hear when approaching the first couple of flouts of the season. So I did some reading and some research, and there's a book called Atlas of the Heart by Brene Brown, where she defines um, anxiety and fear in many different ways, but I'm going to share the one that really resonated with me and kind of was like a aha uh -huh. moment. So fear, basically she says that fear is a response to a threat in the moment, and that threat may be a threat to your survival. So for example, if a lion were to walk in right now, I would take off running out the back door, no questions asked, that is a direct threat to my survival, where as anxiety is this type of projection thinking where we are nervous or scared that something bad is gonna happen in the future, that it hasn't happened yet. So an example of that would be, while I'm filming this video, I'm sitting here really nervous or really scared looking at the door the entire time because I'm worried some lion's going to run in. So what's crazy um, is that we don't really tend to overthink the natural fear of things. So like if a lion were to walk in right now, I wouldn't think about the shoes I was wearing. I wouldn't think about how fast I was running. I wouldn't think, wouldn't have time to think. I would just get up and run where if I have anxiety about it or I'm projecting it, I have all of these things to think about, which kind of helps me kind of clarify the difference between having genuine fear and then having like anxious feelings or anxiety towards something. So in one of the podcasts that I listened to, he said that we never overthink the good stuff, only the bad stuff. And I was like, wait, what? And he was like, think about it. You don't walk around being like, oh, I'm so grateful for my legs and I'm so grateful for my car and I'm so grateful for this coffee. We typically are like, what if we spill this coffee or what if they get my coffee order wrong? And so we always tend to overthink negatively instead of positively. And he basically said, once you realize that overthinking comes from being nervous or scared of something, then it will give you a clearer picture and a better desire to help combat or stop those overthinking feelings. So now that we know we overthink full outs or we have these negative emotions attached to full outs, due to being anxious or nervous or scared, let's dive into my five tips and tricks that'll help you with those thoughts. So my first personal tip and trick and my favorite one would be thinking in terms of experiments. So especially when approaching the first couple of flouts of the season, you should just go into it with a let's see what happens type of mindset. So when you're doing an experiment, you don't really know what the outcome's going to be. You don't really know what the result's gonna be. You're genuinely accepting the unknown and removing expectations. And when you can apply this to the first couple of flouts of the season, it really is a magical thing. So when lining up your flout, just have that mentality of let's see how this goes. Um, let's see how I'm gonna feel about this afterwards. Um, what's gonna happen if I genuinely give maximum effort for two and a half minutes? So when you're approaching your first couple of flouts of the season, just go into it like, let's see how this goes. Have an experimental mind, have an open mind, and I promise it's gonna help you stop that overthinking. So my next tip would be thinking about the value or what you can gain from running the full out with a positive mindset or giving maximum effort. So, I mean, the first value would be the physical workout that you're getting. I read an interesting fact the other day that since COVID, only 9% of teenagers and young adults get the exercise that they need. And so you have the opportunity to give your lungs and to give your heart and to give your body this great workout. I mean, think about it. When you run a full out, that's probably the most you're going to push yourself physically and mentally throughout the week. And that can be extremely beneficial. That can have a lot of value in it. And just think about the value that you're getting, whether it's I'm getting better at a skill or I'm getting more comfortable or my stunt group is getting more consistent. Always think about the benefits of the full out because the benefits are always going to outweigh um, the negative emotions or the feelings that you have attached to it. My next strategy for you to use would be using fear as your compass. And once I've heard this and started implementing it, it really did make a lot of sense. So 
just think about in general in the past when you've done something that you were scared of or nervous for or it put you outside of your comfort zone that's probably when you've grown the most or when you've learned the most so if you're not nervous or you're not scared you're not really growing and so you can use fear as a compass as an opportunity for growth or for transformation so if you're lining up a flower and you're nervous or intimidated use that as a positive like I know that because I'm nervous or because I'm intimidated I can become a stronger athlete or a stronger cheerleader because of this I mean I think about this like in my personal life and outside experiences like the great opportunities that have come my way or the most amount of growth or transformation that I've had have come from experiences where I was uncomfortable or put outside of my comfort zone. So if you're scared of something, run towards it. For sure, using fear as your compass is a unique way to combat that overthinking and it's genuinely intriguing, so do it. My next piece of advice is to live by the motto and think about the motto of taking action no matter how you feel. And this is something that I have been implementing in my daily life or even as a coach at practices is if there's two or three athletes missing, it's not ideal and I can get upset and be like the practice is going to be unproductive or I can go into it with the same type of attack as if I were to have full team attendance, which is where I'm taking action and I'm taking consistent action no matter how I'm feeling. And this takes practice, but once you can do that, it'll be easier to approach your full outs. And so especially for the first couple of the season, what I would suggest is consistently showing up and consistently giving maximum effort no matter how you're feeling because there are going to be bad days at school, bad days at home, or you're not feeling your best. And you're going to have to do a full out routine or you're going to have to compete. So practicing consistent action, no matter how you're feeling, can really help stop all of those negative feelings or negative emotions attached to full out. So let's say you've had a long day, you had school cheer at 6 a.m., a test in the middle of the day, a teacher wasn't nice to you. Be like, be proud of yourself that you can go into practice and take action and be positive and give your best no matter how you're feeling on the inside and you'll feel the results it's gonna feel great but take action no matter how you feel consistently so beneficial the next tip and trick that I have and the last one I'm gonna share with you today would be the third person theory or the out of the jar theory whatever you want to call it or whatever you might have read or listened but it's where you basically look at the situation from a third party perspective or you remove yourself entirely and you're looking at the situation. So think about, and this is kind of like um, a way that I like to do it, or think of people that you look up to, whether it's another cheerleader or a coach or a cheerleader on another team or just a person in general, someone who they, they make all the right choices or they're living the life that you want or they're just a role model. You would just be like, how would they handle that situation? Or what would the best version of myself handle this situation. So you're at practice and the coach is like, line it up, we're going full out. And in your head, you're like, I don't want to do this. I'm scared. It's going to be hard. My lungs are going to collapse. Then you think like, how would your favorite athlete in the world react to this? Or how would Susie Q react to this? Or how would Michael Jordan or how would Michael, all of these people like that you might look up to, how would they respond? And then in your head, you think like, oh, they would have a good attitude or they would be positive or they would do all of their skills. And so it's kind of removing your personal self, looking at it from a third party perspective and then taking initiative and then making those changes. So it's kind of just third party looking out. What would this person do? What would the best version of myself do in this moment? So those are a few of my personal tips and tricks to help you stop overthinking the first couple of flouts of the season and my recommendation would just be to choose one. Choose one of these tactics that you resonate with or that you had like an aha moment with and try to implement that in your practice. Whether you do it successfully or not, becoming aware of those thoughts and those feelings and trying to have a more positive and more productive mindset is already a step in the right direction. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, 
please share it with your friends or teammates or anyone else who you think will find this video helpful. This month, we plan on diving into the mentality and the productivity of approaching full outs. So make sure you subscribe to the channel for new videos posted weekly. And I will see you in this video where Panthers, Cheetahs, and Sassy Cats compete their running tumbling for the mop competition. See you there.